Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video is an introduction to squishy circuits for classroom use. Squishy circuits can be used as a fun project where students get to build light-up sculptures like this frog, and can also be used to introduce basic circuit terminology, like the terms open, closed, and short circuit, series and parallel circuit, electrical conductor and insulator, and polarity. To do a Squishy Circuits project, you will need a Squishy Circuits kit, four AA batteries which are not included in the kit, Play-Doh, and modeling clay. You can also use homemade dough, which will be cheaper in large batches, but does require more time and access to a stove to make. So you can decide what approach you want to use based on the time and resources you have available. To start out, remove the AA battery pack from your kit, which is a large black rectangle and put the rest of the kit aside. You won't need those parts for now. Have all of your students check their battery packs to make sure the switch on the front is in the off position. This is an important safety note that we'll discuss a little more in a minute. Next, look at the batteries and explain that they have a positive end and a negative end. The positive end is marked with a plus sign. Open the battery pack by flipping it over and pushing down and sliding the back cover off. This will open it and show four compartments where the batteries fit. If you look closely, you'll notice that these compartments also have a positive sign and a minus sign inside them. When you insert the batteries, it is important to make sure that the positive sign on the battery lines up with the positive sign inside the battery pack. Younger students might need some help doing this, but older students should be able to put the batteries in on their own since it's very similar to putting batteries in a toy or a TV remote. Put all four batteries in, walk around the classroom to do a quick spot check, and make sure that nobody put their batteries in backwards. Once all, all four are in, you can slide the cover back on and snap it into place. Now we're going to go back to our safety note. Make sure the battery pack is in the off position. It's very important throughout the project to make sure that the two metal prongs on the end of the battery pack wires do not touch each other directly when the battery pack is on. This will create a short circuit that can get very hot and actually hot enough to burn you. So you always want to make sure the switch is in the off position just to be safe in case these two leads bump around and touch each other. Now that you've prepared your battery pack, you're almost ready to make your first squishy circuit. So to do that, you're not going to need the modeling clay just yet. You're going to need two lumps of Play-Doh and one of the LEDs from your kit. So first we're going to talk a little bit more about circuits. Remember we mentioned that the batteries have a positive and a negative end. And in electronics, red usually represents positive and black represents negative. So these two wires coming out of the battery pack, there's one for each color, positive and negative. And if you look very closely at an LED, LED stands for light emitting diode, is a type of very tiny light found in lots of electronic devices. Look closely at the two legs sticking out of it and you'll see that one of them is slightly longer than the other. The longer leg is the positive side and the shorter leg is the negative side. So we'll get a little bit more to that in a bit, but the general idea is that there are positive and negative sides of this circuit that we have to pay attention to. So, Open up your Play-Doh and get two equal sized lumps. So I'm just going to open this one can here and make two little balls of Play-Doh. Exact shape, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take my battery pack and plug one of the leads into each one of these balls. Next I'm going to take my LED. Now remember that I said the LED has polarity meaning it has a positive side and a negative side. So an LED kind of works like a one-way valve for electricity that will only let electricity flow through in one direction. The positive side of the LED needs to go to the positive side of the battery pack, which is the red wire, and the negative side needs to go to the black wire, which is the negative side of the battery pack. So you can bend these leads apart slightly. This is something to watch out for if you're reusing the kit extensively. As students bend these leads back and forth, over and over again, eventually they might fatigue and break, just like if you bend a paperclip back and forth. So after a while, you might need some replacement LEDs, but they should be okay at first. So I'm going to take the two leads of my LED and plug them right into these two lumps of Play-Doh. Now, again, I'm going to bring up a safety note here. 
In general, you want to avoid direct metal on metal contact. So always make sure there is some Play-Doh in between the legs of the LED and the leads from the battery pack. So imagine if I had x-ray vision and could see through this Play-Doh, I want to make sure that those two metal pieces aren't actually touching each other inside, which maybe could happen if I squished everything really close together here. So make sure there's a little gap, the metal pieces aren't touching, reach over and turn your battery pack on, and your LED should light up. You just made your first squishy circuit. You have completed a closed circuit because you have made a closed loop or path for the electricity to flow. It comes from the positive end of the batteries out through this red wire, through the lump of Play-Doh, through the LED, and then back through the black wire to the battery pack. And again, that is called a closed circuit. You can have your students test or maybe ask them what they think will happen before they test if you break that closed path at any point. So for example, if I remove one of the LED leads or either one of the battery pack leads, you'll see that the LED goes out. So it's not enough just to have one wire going to the LED. This is called an open circuit or a broken path where there is not a complete path for electricity to flow through the LED and back to the battery pack. So you have to have a closed circuit in order for the electricity to flow. The next thing you can have your students test is ask them what will happen if they take the two lumps of Play-Doh and push them together. If they do that, this creates a short circuit and the LED goes out. This happens because even though there is still a complete path for the electricity to flow, it wants to take the path of least resistance or the laziest way to get back to the battery pack. And there is less resistance as it flows through the Play-Doh here than if it goes through the LED. So instead of going through the LED, it will choose this path and go through the Play-Doh and the LED won't light up at all. So you can imagine that could be kind of annoying if you want to make a sculpture or something that has multiple LEDs because if your Play-Doh bits touch, then your LED goes out. And this is where the modeling clay comes in. So the Play-Doh is electrically conductive, meaning it lets electricity flow through it, kind of like a metal. The metal inside these wires is an electrical conductor. The modeling clay is an electrical insulator. So it behaves more like rubber or plastic, like the red and black plastic on the outside of these wires. So I'm gonna use some white modeling clay here, make a little flat piece of it, and put it in between my two pieces of Play-Doh. Now, when I do that and plug the LED back in, you can see that it still stays on, even though all of these pieces are touching. This happens because the LED is connected in a closed circuit, and the modeling clay is an insulator, so even though these pieces are touching, the electricity cannot flow through the Play-Doh, through the modeling clay, and then to the next piece of Play-Doh. It has to go through the LED. So again, we'll summarize that really quick, the three circuit terms you want to know. You have a closed circuit where there is a path for, the, path for the electricity to flow, open circuit where that path is broken so there's no path at all, and then short circuit where there is a path but the path of least resistance is through the Play-Doh and not through the LED. So you'll probably have students who want to add more LEDs, and you can do that by just taking more LEDs from your kit and adding them right next to the first one. So I'm going to grab a second LED. Again, I'm going to check to make sure that the longer leg is going towards the red side, the shorter leg is going towards the black side, and plug it right in next to the first one, and it lights up. This is called a parallel circuit. So there are two separate loops, one for each LED that the electricity can flow through. Breaking either one of those loops does not affect the other LED, so the other LED will still stay on. Now, this is in contrast to a series circuit where I connect all of the LEDs in a row. You can see to do that, I actually need three lumps of Play-Doh and two lumps of modeling clay. So I have a circuit that goes from the red wire through the first LED to this lump of Play-Doh, through the second LED, and then to the black wire. The problem with that is this circuit works, but if I remove one of the LEDs, the other LED goes out because now there is no complete path for the electricity to flow through both LEDs. 
you may also notice that these LEDs are both a little dimmer. As you add more and more LEDs in series, they will actually get dimmer until they don't light up at all. So you don't want to use series circuits for squishy circuits. It's important to use parallel circuits instead to make sure all your LEDs stay on. So at this point, your students should understand how to connect multiple LEDs to something and you can let them go ahead and make their own creations like say an animal with eyes or a house with lights in the windows and just let them explore. They shouldn't need direct instruction at this point. You can walk around and help troubleshoot. For example, many times students will say my LED isn't lighting up and usually it's because they just have it in backwards. So the first thing you can check if an LED is not lighting up is just pull it out, flip it around, put it back in, and it should light up. You might also see after extensive use that the battery pack leads have kind of come loose. So you can see there's kind of a big gap that isn't tightly packed around there. And as that comes very loose, the LEDs might go on and off. So make sure that the Play-Doh is always nice and tightly packed around those leads so they stay on. You could also see accidental short circuits. So maybe at first this looks like I have that insulating modeling clay in between, but if you flip it over, so from the top this looks okay, but if I look at the bottom you see that the Play-Doh pieces are touching so you actually have a short circuit there. So help students troubleshoot, encourage them to solve those problems by themselves, and have fun and make their own sculpture. In addition to the LEDs, you can also play with the other components in your kit. So the kit also comes with a motor and two buzzers. So rather than using the LEDs, you can see what happens when you connect these parts to your circuit. So for example, they all have these red and black wires. You actually might want to be a little careful giving the buzzers to an entire classroom of students because they are quite loud. So if you think noise is going to be a problem, you might want to stay away from the buzzers. The motor has a very tiny shaft that is actually kind of hard to see when it spins because it's so smooth and cylindrical. So you can stick a little piece of dough or modeling clay on the end and then when you plug the motor in you should be able to see that spin. But you might have to be careful that you don't put too much Play-Doh on and get it stuck. Because if you, oh, there we go. So again, it's going to be a little hard. You might be able to hear the motor spinning. It can be hard to see it spinning if you don't have Play-Doh on. But there you go. You can see that modeling clay make it spin. And again, you can test all of the same concepts with these components. For example, if I make a short circuit, the motor stops spinning. If I remove just one of the leads, I now have an open circuit and it stops spinning. So your students can experiment with all of these different components and then when you are done, if you are letting your students take their creations home, um, I recommend a paper plate or maybe a stiff piece of paper or cardboard so they can kind of put everything on and have one piece to transport it with. If not, you will want to disassemble, pack everything up, store the modeling clay and Play-Doh in Ziploc bags or other airtight containers so they don't dry out, and take a damp paper towel and make sure you wipe off all of the metal leads of the various parts. So the battery pack, the LEDs, the motors. If you don't do that, over time the leads will start to corrode and eventually the performance of your kit might decrease. So it's important to clean the leads off after each use before you put everything into storage. Squishy circuits were originally developed at the University of St. Thomas. This video was created by Science Buddies with generous support from the Best Buy Foundation. There is also a PDF that accompanies this video that you can use as a reference on the day of the activity. This should be everything you need to know to get your students started with squishy circuits. Good luck and have fun!